Edward Bradford Titch in a DSC, PhD, LLD. Litt was a British psychologist who studied under Wilhelm Wundt for several years. Titchener is best known for creating his version of psychology that described the structure of the mind, structuralism. He created the largest doctoral program in the United States after becoming a professor at Cornell University, and his first graduate student, Margaret Floyd Washburn, became the first woman to be granted a PhD in psychology. Biography Equals education and early life equals, Titchener attended the Prebendal School in Malvern College and then went on to Oxford from 1885 to 1890. At Oxford, Titchener first began to read the works of Wilhelm Wundt. During his time at Oxford, Titchener translated the first volume of the third edition of Wundt's book Principles of Physiological Psychology from German into English. After receiving his degree from Oxford in 1890, Titchener went on to Leipzig in Germany to study with Wundt. He completed his doctoral program and went on to take a position as a professor at Cornell University where he taught his view on the ideas of Wundt to his students in the form of structuralism. Main Ideas Titchener's ideas on how the mind worked were heavily influenced by Wundt's theory of voluntarism and his ideas of association and apperception. Titchener attempted to classify the structures of the mind in the way a chemist breaks down chemicals into their component parts a euro water into hydrogen and oxygen, for example. Thus, for Titchener, just as hydrogen and oxygen were structures, so were sensations and thoughts. He conceived of hydrogen and oxygen as structures of a chemical compound, and sensations and thoughts as structures of the mind. A sensation, according to Titchener, had four distinct properties, intensity, quality, duration, and extent. Each of these related to some corresponding quality of stimulus, although some stimuli were insufficient to provoke their relevant aspect of sensation. He further differentiated particular types of sensations, auditory sensation, for example, he divided into tones, and noises. Ideas and perceptions he considered to be formed from sensations. Ideational type was related to the type of sensation on which an idea was based, for example, sound or vision, a spoken conversation or words on a page. Titchener believed that if the basic components of a mind could be defined and categorized that the structure of mental processes and higher thinking could be determined. What each element of the mind is, how those elements interact with each other and why they interact in the ways that they do was the basis of reasoning that Titchener used in trying to find structure to the mind. Equals introspection equals, the main tool that Titchener used to try to determine the different components of consciousness was introspection. Unlike Wundt's method of introspection, Titchener had very strict guidelines for the reporting of an introspective analysis. The subject would be presented with an object, such as a pencil. The subject would then report the characteristics of that pencil. The subject would be instructed not to report the name of the object because that did not describe the raw data of what the subject was experiencing. Titchener referred to this as stimulus error. In experimental psychology, a manual of laboratory practice, Titchener detailed the procedures of his introspective methods precisely. As the title suggests, the manual was meant to encompass all of experimental psychology despite its focus on introspection. To Titchener, there could be no valid psychological experiments outside of introspection, and he opened the section directions to students with the following definition. A psychological experiment consists of an introspection or a series of introspections made under standard conditions. This manual of Titchener's provided students with in-depth outlines of procedure for experiments on optical illusions, Weber's law, visual contrast, after images, auditory and olfactory sensations, perception of space, ideas, and associations between ideas as well as descriptions proper behavior during experiments and general discussion of psychological concepts. Titchener wrote another instructive manual for students and two more for instructors in the field. The level of detail Titchener put into these manuals reflected his devotion to a scientific approach to psychology. He argued that all measurements were simply agreed upon conventions and subscribed to the belief that psychological phenomena too, could be systematically measured and studied. Titchener put great stock in the systematic work of Gustav Fechner, 
whose psychophysics advanced the notion that it was indeed possible to measure mental phenomena. The majority of experiments were to be performed by two trained researchers working together, one functioning as the observer, and the other as the experimenter. The experimenter would set up the experiment and record the introspection made by his or her partner. After the first run of any experiment, the researchers were to then switch roles and repeat the experiment. Tichina placed a great deal of emphasis on the importance of harmony and communication between the two memberships in these partnerships. Communication, in particular, was necessary, because illness or agitation on the part of the observer could affect the outcome of any given experiment. Life and Legacy Tichina was a charismatic and forceful speaker. However, although his idea of structuralism thrived while he was alive and championing for it, Structuralism did not live on after his death. Some modern reflections on Titchener consider the narrow scope of his psychology and the strict, limited methodology he deemed acceptable as a prominent explanation for the fall of Titchener's structuralism after his death. So much of it was wrapped up in Titchener's precise, careful dictations that without him, the field floundered. Structuralism, along with once voluntarism, were both effectively challenged and improved upon though they did influence many schools of psychology today. Tichina was known for bringing some part of Wundt's structuralism to America, but with a few modifications. For example, whereas Wilhelm Wundt emphasized the relationship between elements of consciousness, Tichina focused on identifying the basic elements themselves. In his textbook An Outline of Psychology, Tichina put forward a list of more than 44,000 elemental qualities of conscious experience. Tichina is also remembered for coining the English word empathy in 1909 as a translation of the German word ein for one quarter Lunds firm of paragraph gen, a new phenomenon explored at the end of 19th century mainly by Theodore Lips. Ein for one quarter Lunds firm of paragraph gen was later retranslated as empathy, and is still in use that way in German. It should be stressed that Tichina used the term empathy in a personal way, strictly intertwined with his methodological use of introspection and to refer to at least three differentiable phenomena. Tichina's effect on the history of psychology, as it is taught in classrooms, was partially the work of his student Edwin Boring. Boring's experimental work was largely unremarkable, but his book History of Experimental Psychology was widely influential, as, consequentially, were his portrayals of various psychologists, including his own mentor Edward Tichina. The length at which Boring detailed Tichina's contributions to Euro contemporary Hugo Mar one Cortens de Berg received roughly a tenth as much of Boring's attention to Euro raise questions today as to whether or not the influence credited to Tichina on the history of psychology is inflated as a result. Professor Tichina received honorary degrees from Harvard, Clark, and Wisconsin. He became a charter member of the American Psychological Association. Translated Carl One Quarter LPE's Outlines of Psychology and Other Works, became the American editor of Mind in 1894, and associate editor of the American Journal of Psychology in 1895, and wrote several books. In 1904, he founded the group The Experimentalists, which continues today as the Society of Experimental Psychologists. Tichina's brain was contributed to the Wilder Brain Collection at Cornell. Bibliography, boring, for example tape transcription presented at a meeting of the Society of Experimental Psychologists in 1967. Recovered from, Tichina's Experimentalists. Journal of the History of the Behavioral Sciences, Volume 3, published online February 13, 2006. The Thursal, D. History of Psychology. New York, New York, McGraw-Hill. Tichina. E.B. Experimental Psychology, A Manual of Laboratory Practice. New York, New York, Macmillan and Company, Ltd. An Outline of Psychology, A Primer of Psychology, Experimental Psychology Euro 1.11.22.12.2, Elementary Psychology of Feeling and Attention, Experimental, Picture, Biography and Bibliography in the Virtual Laboratory of the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science. Notes. External links, works by or about Edward B. Titchener at Internet Archive, works by Edward B. Titchener at LibriVox.